We're going to be having a look at electrical power. We'll start off by defining it and then have a look at, uh, well, we'll start with one equation for it, but it turns out that uh, once we start combining that with a couple of other equations, namely Ohm's law, we can derive uh, a few different flavors of that equation. Uh, so starting off with the definition, uh, just as with mechanical power, power is the rate of energy transfer. So when we have, uh, for example, an EMF, uh, a battery or a solar cell or something like that, then we have power being converted or transferred from, say, chemical energy or solar energy into electrical energy. Similarly, at a resistor or a lamp, we have electrical energy being transferred for, uh, into something like thermal energy or light energy or kinetic energy for a motor, um, and that energy is transferred at a given rate, so power is the rate of energy transfer. So if we were going to come up with some sort of equation for this, uh, then using P as the symbol for power, we know it is the rate of work being done. So we can say the rate of energy transfer, or we can say the weight of work being done. So power is work done over time. Um, now, in an electrical context, we know that an equation to find voltage is voltage is work done per charge. So if we rearrange this for the work done, uh, we get work done is voltage times charge. And we can substitute that into this. So power is voltage times charge. So that's this work done divided by time. Um, now the more prudent amongst you, is that the right word, prudent? Uh, the more eagle-eyed amongst you uh, will notice that Q over T is equal to I. And so we can rearrange this as V I. So if, uh, if in our circuit we have a cell connected to a resistor, we measure the current and the voltage across the resistor, then the power being dissipated by that resistor will be the voltage times the current. So this is the equation that we would use to determine the electrical power uh, either being dissipated by some uh, voltage sink across a potential difference or being generated uh, by a voltage source, an EMF. Um, but we can combine this with Ohm's law, which says V equals IR. So um, we can substitute instead of V, we can put IR. And so if we do that, then what we get is equals I times R times I, or better written, I squared R. So this is another form of it, with this VI having been the original form that we started off with. Uh, there's a final form, because what we can do with that P equals VI is instead of substituting uh, for V to get it just in terms of I and R, we can rearrange this for I and we get I is equal to V over R. So this is also equal to V times V over R, which is V squared over R. So we've got these three forms uh, containing any two of voltage, current, and resistance. So if we know any two of voltage, current, and resistance, uh, then we can find the power being dissipated by some component or being generated by some component, just as using Ohm's law, we can find the third of those three uh, quantities as well. Uh, being power, just as any other power, it is measured in watts. So here's a fairly straightforward example that we can use. So this question states, determine the resistance of and the power used by a power shower. The shower is supplied with 230 volts from mains and a current of 40 amps, so it's drawing 40 amps. Should the resistance be increased or decreased to increase the power output? So this is kind of three questions in one, really. So the first one is to determine the resistance of the power shower. And for that, we actually just need Ohm's law. Uh, so V equals IR. Therefore, R is equal to V over I, which is 230 over 40, which gives us a value 
of 5.75 ohms. Uh, the next point, uh, so that's the resistance. Next up it asks for power. So power, uh, we can use either the voltage and the current or we have now got the resistance, so we can use any of the forms of power that we introduced a moment ago. So we can either use VI, I squared R, or V squared over R, and either of these should give us exactly the same answer. I'm going to go for this one because the voltage and the current are what we're giving in the, in the question, whereas the resistance is something we've done further calculation on. So if we had made a mistake in this calculation, then that's going to introduce that mistake here. So by using just these two values from the um, question itself, I can uh, help make, reduce the chance of error. So that's going to be 230 times 40, which gives us 9,000. 200 watts. So the power level of this shower is just over 9000. The final part of the question is should the resistance be increased or decreased to increase the power output? Uh, so if, we, if we're going to be looking at the effect of resistance then we're going to want either the equation I squared R or the equation V squared over R. Um, so if we're going to use this one, we'd have to work out what effect changing the resistance would have on the current. If we use this one, then changing the resistance won't affect the voltage. So when we've got a mains power supply, this 230 volts is constant. And the current we draw depends on the resistance. So by using this one here, we can see that if the voltage is held constant at 230 volts, then let's say we reduce the, the resistance. So if we've got V squared over R, which is the power, if we reduce the resistance, we're dividing the voltage by a smaller number, and so the power increases. If we increase the resistance, we're dividing the voltage squared by a larger number, and so we get a smaller power. So if we want to increase the power output, then the resistance of this power shower must go down. So there we go, three fairly straightforward equations which we can use to work out the power uh, either generated by or dissipated by an electrical component, depending on whether this voltage that we're looking at is an EMF or a PD.